Hello once again, Jose Rodriguez here. Everyone who produces prints worries about print longevity, but you can do something to extend that longevity for a particular combination through a particular printer, inks, and media choice. Just because you have OEM inks does not mean that print will last forever because you printed it on a really, really bad paper. A paper with loads of OBAs, optical brightening agents, that has a tendency to really super shorten the life expectancy of a print. Example, Pro 1000 with nothing but OEM inks on their common Pro Luster. It has OBAs. It's a resin coated paper. It's high quality, but it's not the highest quality paper. Compared to the same image printed on the same printer, same inks, but on Palo Duro soft rag from Red River. Probably almost seven times longer lifespan. Simply because that paper is a rag paper, absolutely zero OBAs. The coating is basically better at preventing ozone from damaging that image. Although printing with pigment colors is not going to be much of an issue, but Consider the fact that you might be producing prints with something like the 8550 or Pro 100 or, you know, an Artisan 14, whatever from Epson. They utilize dye inks, XP 15,000, for instance. So you can do a lot to enhance or lengthen the life expectancy of your prints by following a few little rules. This image although beautiful is printed on a super cheap glossy paper very very thin there is no protection either from the back or the front you can see that this is plasticky coated type paper it's resin coated but very very lightweight the surface yeah semi-gloss is not protected against ozone it's going to be affected how long will it take it depends on your viewing environment on the other hand, this one, high resolution colors. Let me get this oriented correctly. High resolution colors. There's a lot of ink density in those uh, images there, those areas. It's going to take longer for this image to begin to fade to the point where it's noticeable. You begin to see it. On a monochrome, however, because it utilizes all the inks, Mostly black and grays, but also uses magenta, yellow, and cyan to composite these gray tones. As soon as one dye ink, one color, this is dye ink, by the way. Assuming one color begins to fade, as soon, you will begin to see a color shift on the opposite. So if yellow fades, this will begin to look like magenta and cyan mixed together, kind of a purplish tint. If magenta begins to fade first, what's left? yellow and cyan everything's going to turn greenish and you can just look at your color wheel and figure out what will happen if one particular color begins to fade if black begins to fade you will see a color shift okay that's another one so this one has high saturation it will take longer to show results now let's look at some other same cheap paper looks great now but if I leave that in a brightly lit area, unprotected, I'll get to that in a second, it will begin to fade probably within a few months or maybe a couple of years if, if we get lucky. Depends on your conditions. Okay, well then, why if we just print on a better paper? So here we have a matte paper. And that's a black and white image. So this is actually composed of yellow dots, magenta dots, cyan dots, gray dots, and black dots. You cannot see color because the blending is so amazingly perfect, okay? That's what the print engine does for you. So, basically it's a mosaic, a micro mosaic of those five colors. When will this fade? Well, this is not RC paper, and this does not have optical brightening agents. It may take 
a much longer time to show any kind of fade. Okay, we're not talking about protection yet. Now, let's move over to some very high-end papers. So this print right here is on a very, very expensive, comparatively speaking, we're talking three to four dollars a sheet of a rag base paper. It is a matte surface, it's burrito coated, and this will probably not fade at least seven times than something done on a paper that's resin coated with OBAs. Okay, this is a smooth matte paper. It is called uh, charcoal something or other. It's for art. And so this, this will last a very, very long time. And the top. This is on Ilford. What was that? Gosh. I don't want to use any more because I have very little of it. Uh, texture cotton rag. Put this down. Put this down. Let's take a look at this. This is sumptuous at the touch the look the surface the quality that you get and how do we do this we did that on that printer back here amazing black and white mode the same image without converting to black and white printed on that printer this paper by itself will extend the life of that those two results five six seven times simple because of the paper quality the paper is not introducing factors that will cause fade whereas those oba papers those resin coated papers do that they actually help enhance your fading of your prints now how can we protect these even the cheapest even the cheapest paper ones frame them well you cannot be framing every single print you make buy some good proven protectant sprays okay not the ones that they not the not the clear sprays you see at by krylon at the home center no go to, to an art supply store and get print protective spray basically they are they are used by artists to protect their charcoal drawings pencil drawings anything with pastels anything that you could then possibly touch and smear and damage you spray that with that it will protect it now there are some specific sprays made for inkjet prints by moab by hanamiel those are the two that i use i actually use i do use a krylon one that they claim is for art but i just don't like the results and i have one spray that is actually pretty stinky and then i have another one that's not so smelly I had them here, but I moved them. So this is your Hanamiel Protectum Spray. This is not cheap. It's like $26 for this. Ridiculously expensive, but it's very good. Krylon Low Odor Clear Finish. Uh, it's really, see the, the paint brushes and all of that? It's supposed to be for art, but it's not really intended for inkjet printing although it works really well on canvas prints because canvas prints normally are going to get varnished over anyway so that will actually impart a bit of a gloss to it which looks pretty nice on a canvas print you really don't want to end up with a super matte surface so that's it you apply that and it will be sealed now against ozone and ozone is what will oxidize any third-party dye ink Keep that in mind, as well as OEM ones. Uh, not so much of an effect on pigment inks, but again, if you're printing on a cheap paper that may cost an increase in how rapidly your print fades, then you may want to consider protecting it with one coat on either side, front and back. So these sprays are available in my Amazon affiliate page. I have a link on my video description, so take advantage of that. You can find them there. It will help the channel if you purchase through our affiliate page and that's it you protect your prints don't put them on a window where you get direct sunlight don't put them in an area that has a high degree of ozone especially around something electrical like a refrigerator 
you put them on that door, they're going to fade. Believe me, that's happened to a lot of little photos that I put on my refrigerator of the grandson. They're faded. Within a few months, they just begin to fade, period. Put them down here on my wall, no problem for years, for years. So it depends on your environment. There's really so many different variables for displaying your prints and either causing or preventing print fade. All right, that is it for now. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope everyone has a successful 2023. We're looking ahead to see what this is going to bring. Uh, but anyway, again, thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, obviously, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.